cool. Hello, my friends. It is Devin here with the Da Vinci Junior Mix. No, the Da Vinci Junior 2.0 Mix 3D printer. What a name. This printer was sent to me by the folks at XYZ Printing. And the reason I was interested in reviewing this machine is because it is a sub $500 dual extrusion printer. Not only can it print with two colors, but it can blend the two colors together. And personally, that's something I hadn't seen in any 3D printer, let alone at that cost. Today, I'll go through my experience getting this thing up and running, the prints that I have created, and my overall opinion on this printer. There's some things that are super cool and a lot of things that I'm not a big fan of, but we'll get into all that in this video. So let's get right into it. See what life is like with the Da Vinci Junior 2.0 Mix 3D printer. In the box, you'll find everything you need. Tape, scrapers, guide tubes, nozzles, pipe cleaners, and pokers and needles for unclogging nozzles, and two spools of the Da Vinci Junior filament. The first thing I'll do is bring the build plate up to the front so that I can apply the perfectly sized tape and I'll throw in my spools. They are specialty spools, computer chipped, so you have to use those special spools and they go inside of the printer itself. I installed the guide tubes here. I did it wrong the first time. They actually cross over so the left filament goes in the right side and vice versa. There's a little lever and a tube where you push the filament in. Then you'll just navigate to the filament loading command on the display here. As you can see, it's a four line LCD display. The screen is easy to read and navigation is quite simple using those buttons on the right. Here you can see the filament loading in and it'll basically extrude both filaments at the same time. So what comes out should be a blend between the two colors. Once it's coming out nice and clean, you hit okay. And from there, I went ahead and started the sample print that's already loaded on the SD card. I canceled my first print not too far in because the extrusion was pretty sparse and I think it had to do with the distance from the build plate. So I went ahead and ran their calibration, this nine point leveling process that they tout, which should automatically level the build plate. I tried to print again and this time the nozzle was too far from the build plate so the plastic didn't stick. So I canceled it one more time and I went through the menu and manually lowered that Z height just a tiny bit. After doing that twice, lowering just a little bit at a time, I finally did get the print to come out and it came out really well. As you can see, it's got that really cool gradient that is achieved by pushing both filaments at different ratios through a single hot end. That's a pretty neat feature, pretty much the superpower that this printer has going for it. And as you can see, the print quality was pretty good as well. My next print was this snail that I sculpted in VR. And this is made by using two different STLs for each individual color. So not only can this printer mix the two colors, but it can print each color separately by using this purge pillar on the left to push through all of the yellow before switching to green. And then it goes back and pushes out all the green before switching back to yellow. It takes a little longer to print, but as you can see, it does a pretty good job of keeping those colors separate and overall, I was really happy with how this print came out. So that was kind of my simple calibration print, but I like to torture my test printers. So I went ahead and printed this stick steeple that I also made in VR, and it consists of really thin rods that connect and make this cool little building. This is being printed on the highest quality settings through the included XYZ Wear software. And as you can see, there is a lot of stringing. I printed a larger version that takes up most of the build plate and that printed a lot better, but there's still a crazy amount of stringing that I had to clean up after the fact using my X-Acto knife. This is something that could probably be fixed by changing the retraction settings in the G-code, but the software that this printer comes with doesn't allow you to do that. This is XYZ Wear, the slicer you're meant to use with the printer, and it's one of my biggest gripes with the printer actually, because this slicer is super limited and pretty frustrating. For example, I was able to scale this Galactop up to a size that should still fit on the build plate, but the moving tool actually has this slider that 
doesn't let me move things all the way to the center of the bed. And that's because the model wasn't perfectly centered when I brought it in. Here's one of my springos, and this drop down here shows you the gradient that the printer is going to print at. And you can kind of adjust that, but it doesn't update on the visual of the actual model, just on this little gradient here on the right. Here are the print settings, and as you can see, everything is bound by sliders. You're limited to four different layer heights, three different shell thicknesses, three speeds, and so on. It's made to be super easy to use, but to me, that just means it's less powerful and harder to do things you want to. You can use a third-party slicer like Simplify 3D to slice G-code for this printer, but then you're not going to have the ability to blend the colors together, which is like the main thing that I want to do with this printer. The other big limitation are the spools. They come with this center spool that has an NFC chip inside, which basically communicates with the printer, telling it what color you're using, how much filament is left, but most of all, it prevents you from using any other third-party filament. After swapping out my green filament for red, I got a filament jam, and the printer actually detects the jam and it'll stop the print automatically. In this case, it was actually good because the springo was sticking together and it wasn't going to be a successful print, so I saved myself a lot of waiting for a larger failed print. But after doing that, I tried to do a fidget twister and I had the same problem, another filament jam. Then one more time at nearly the same spot. After that, I just changed the file so that it would use the yellow filament blending to red instead of the other way around, and that time I actually got it to print out successfully, creating this really cool fidget twister that has a nice gradient. There's a little bit of a line where I paused to slip on that sliding ring, but overall it worked really well. The same goes for this giraffe. I used it to test the maximum build height, and it looks really good, but it does have that same stringing of my other prints. So I gave it a quick pass with the heat gun and some plastic surgery using my X-Acto knife. Get it? Plastic surgery? Ha! Anyways, after doing that, it looks really good. It's a nice model and that gradient makes it stand out. I also printed this fidget twister. You can see my old video all about how I designed this, but uh, it came out really nice, although I did have to scale it up, so the tolerances on this printer aren't perfect. My final print was this giant Springo skull, but the filament ran out partway through. Once again, the layers stuck together way too much. It was impossible to really get it working. This is something that probably could be fixed by using a better slicer than the included XYZ wear. Having run out of that green filament, I decided to test if I could spool my own filament onto the same spool and get it to work. So I jerry-rigged this little spool winder using a cordless drill and spooled on some pink filament onto that same Da Vinci spool. I put everything back together and I hoped for the best, but I was quickly shut down because the printer reads that tag and tells you, hey, this spool is supposed to be empty. Sorry, can't print. Bummer. So for the price, this Da Vinci Junior 2.0 mix printer can create some decent prints, some really cool dual extrusion prints, some really nice gradients, I really like the things this printer was able to make. As long as you're not trying to do things with crazy tolerances, the prints come out pretty good. There's a lot of smart technology that tells you when the filament is jammed and things like that. That's all fine and good, but XYZ printing, why? Why did you have to make the spools proprietary? It's just the silliest thing to have an NFC chip inside of the spool. I'm sure they'll argue that they limit it to their filament so that you can have the best possible experience because the settings are all fine-tuned for that specific PLA. I can hear that out, but in my opinion, it's not really worth paying twice as much for the filament that does seem to be just standard PLA. There's nothing crazy about it. Yes, if you have a phone with an NFC reader on it, there are ways to hack into the filament spools and reset them. That way you can re-spool it yourself and then print with it. But that's not the way that this was made to be used and is a lot of extra work for what? Not only that, but a lot of the parts in here are proprietary. A lot of printers have the same general parts so you can buy a cheap extruder and swap out things and change the thermistor and stuff. 
And this thing, if the thermistor breaks or something, you gotta change the whole extruder unit. For the DaVinci Junior 1.0, a part like that is gonna cost 100 bucks or something. So that's kind of offsetting the savings of getting a cheap printer. And in fact, for this 2.0 version, I couldn't even find the spare parts for sale, so I don't know what's gonna happen if something breaks on this printer. I'm just giving you my opinion. I don't wanna deal with the special spools or special replacement parts, but if it's worth it for you, if you like the fact that everything comes from one company, so you know it's gonna work together and you don't have to test out different filaments, it's easy to use, it's got dual extrusion, it can blend colors together, it's kinda cool. So if that's what's important to you, check out the link in the description and you can find out more about this printer. So there you have it. It is what it is. It's the DaVinci Junior 2.0 Mix 3D printer. That's all I've got for today. Until next time, I'm Devin. This is Make Anything. Don't forget to stay inspired.